It's Madden NFL 24, and the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Carolina Panthers and the Seattle Seahawks coming up next. With Mount Rainier in the distance, there are few cities finer on a clear afternoon than this one, and we have a picture-perfect day for football at Lumen Field in Seattle. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one in the NFC, as it'll be the Carolina Panthers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, this was a team after the Russell Wilson trade that looked like they might be bottoming out. But for years, the Seahawks have had great success in the NFL draft, as you well know. And they've used the last few drafts to really restock this roster. And they certainly have restocked this roster and have gotten back to playing football the way that they want to do it. Seahawks football, which means running the ball with authority on offense. They've added runners, offensive linemen, and now they're just being forceful in the way they're going about their business the way that they did it when they ran the Super Bowls. Meanwhile, optimism reigning with the visiting Panthers. They've got a new coach, they've got a new quarterback, and they've got a real chance to be a playoff team in 2023. And a lot of it starts on the defensive side of the ball where they've been good for the last few seasons. If the offense joins them, they will be a tough out in the NFC South. Here's the former Florida Gator, Eddie Pinheiro, to get us started. And off we go from Seattle. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. And it is a first-time pro bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. They run with the second year man, it's Kenneth Walker. And he is gonna be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four on that first play, and it's second down. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Sticking with Walker on second down. And how about this start defensively? They're going to get him behind the line a second time. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. You can bet they're not going to go away from the running game anytime soon, but this is obviously not a good start. Two carries, two runs, both stop for a loss. So certainly not the start they were looking for here as they come up on a third and 14. And Gino, meanwhile, tossing complete there to Smith and Jigba. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. Well, three and out to start the game would have been a real disappointment, so this is a nice job of finding something you think will work and executing it. And they're able to keep this opening drive going. Frank Reich not so sure about that last call. He's going to go ahead and throw out the challenge flag. The previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. The the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. Winds up a very good call there defensively to challenge that one, as that now will wind up an incomplete pass. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. Take it at the 37. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. 
So here are the Panthers set to take over for the first time. And Charles will get a look at the much-heralded rookie Bryce Young, the first overall pick from April's draft. Bryce Young, the quarterback out of Alabama with a Heisman Trophy in his hip pocket, is the new face of Carolina football. 80 touchdowns, just 12 picks in his college career for the Crimson Tide. He may be a little small in terms of size, but potential, massive. Good starting position for the Panthers as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Now Young. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. On second down, Young again. On oh, the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Young will set to throw. And he's got first, his tight end. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. It'll be Young again. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he's taken down inside the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. First and 10, Young. Coming across the formation and making the catch his chart. And they move this all the way down to the nine. And a nice gain at 21 yards. And the opening drive, it continues, Charles, to be all pass. And it's working. Now they're on the doorstep of a touchdown here, first and goal. Brandon, because it's working so well, I think the entire playbook is open for them right now. Do you want to run it? Do you want to continue to throw it? Spin the dial. Make your choice. But right now, you like what you're doing in this possession. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short game. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Once again with Sanders. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Dancing to his left. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. How about corner Kobe Bryant coming in to make the sack? You always talk about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays and give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. The kick by Pinheiro is good. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. to the field goal on to kick it away is Pinheiro. Oh. 
And he returns this to the 22. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll get about three up past the 25. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here comes third down and seven. Back to throw, Smith. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Smith on first down. This is Fant on the short completion. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up second down. I like the thought process. I like the design, but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're going to run that drag route, you've got to put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver's too close to the sideline, and they don't get the yards after the catch. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. Shotgun snap, and then the give to Sanders. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. But they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and six. Young. Flushed out right, and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. On third down, they'll run it with Sanders. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. So it's pretty simple, partner. You pick up a turnover, set you up in excellent field position. The last thing you want to do is go three and out in this spot. Yeah, they would have had to settle for a field goal attempt, but now they keep those touchdown hopes alive. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Young's throw complete to his receiver, Thielen. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. They'll run with 
with Sanders at the middle. Go ahead. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Miles Sanders, a 13-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers are able to add on to that lead. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And the lead grows to 10-0. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was Miles Sanders who finished it off with a touchdown run. So an early 10-0 lead for them now as they kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Jeremy Chin, so dangerous wherever he's at on the field, and that time he gets in there for the sack. Well, that's an excellent way to get the pass rush activated. The first sack of the game for them comes on the first play of the drive, and it makes it very tough for the opponent to pick up a first down now, playing behind the sticks. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Smith now to throw. Setting up the screen here. This is Walker. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. I like the thinking there because right after a sack, it can be a great time to call for a screen to your running back and use the eagerness of the defense against him able to gain some positive yards out of this one and make things a little bit easier for him on third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and it will be the Panthers' ball first and 10. The Carolina offense about ready to go. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. to throw Young toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. They'll set up to throw. It's caught by Sanders. Touchdown, Carolina! Miles Sanders, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Panthers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. 
Well, he's used to running it that distance. Here, he had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who's a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And yeah, that makes our score 17 0. So an early advantage now to Goodwin. 17-0 our score as they kick this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot positions. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 23. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. This complete to lock it. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Stiff armed him. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. It'll go as a gain of four and that'll make it second down. Toss left side for Walker. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. From the gun on third down, Smith. And lock it with a grab over the middle. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. Seventeen nothing. Our score after one. Panther football to start quarter number two, as they'll start with a first and ten at their own twenty. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. They have to be pleased with the way that they move the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. And they're able to get this one across the 35. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Second down at six now from the 42. 
throwing. Young. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And we'll get a pause here. There appears to be a Panther who was shaken up on that last play. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. Young working out of the gun. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Quadre Diggs. And the Seahawks are going to take over at their own 41. They've got a pretty comfortable lead right now, but maybe a little too careless for the football that time for the rookie. I think the key word there is comfortable. And there's two schools of thought on it. With that type of a lead, maybe you can take a few more chances because you have a cushion. Others will tell you, don't eat up the cushion with careless play. He'll learn to ride that line as he moves on in his career. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. After the interception, here's Smith. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. And the Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Geno. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far, offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. This is taken at about the 14. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Play fake. Now Young. He gets it to Thomas. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. Ten yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. On first and ten, it's Sanders. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. From the 28, it's second and five. They'll go again with Sanders. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment.
Up the middle they go with Sanders. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. From the 46, here's second and nine. Now Sanders. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Now third down and seven. Now Young. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Devin Bush driving in and picking up the sack. He saw the pressure and he got out, but he never got upfield. And the defense, they took full advantage of a rookie mistake there. They were able to add a big loss on the sack. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And back deep is DJ Dallas. This is brought in at the 21. Holding, receiving team. No! We got to do our job, man! So holding there on the return, and that'll back him up to start the next drive. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call right there, partner. I think when the officials look in their manual and see the expression, jersey getting pulled, that's a flag coming out every time. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 16. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. Holding offense. An unfortunate time for the penalty there. That cancels out a positive play from this offense. Well, not to sound too trite or too accepting, but you and I both know it happens. You got to accept it and move on. Yardage, you got to get back. Focus on the next play and move on. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. Sticking with Walker on second down. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Geno out to throw. He'll find Metcalf. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Now they'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. Now, that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. Carolina getting set to take the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now here's Young. And Shark calls it in. And out across midfield, down to the 45. 23 yards, the final tally. Yeah. 
Young will set to throw. That's caught by Mingo right side. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's definitely a penalty. Young looks to throw on first down. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Meanwhile, the throw by Young was knocked away and incomplete. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. The Panthers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. They'll throw again. Young. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. But the first two drives yielded touchdowns, so there's no reason for them to feel like they have to pull back on the reins. They pushed it downfield, looking for another one right there. Didn't get it, but we know they're going to continue to be bold. This is up and good from Pinheiro. And that will extend their lead even further. So this lead, Charles, is just continuing to swell here in the first half. Well, it's interesting. When we talked to them prior to the game, they told us that their game plan was take no prisoners. And they've lived up to it so far because everything has worked. No guarantee that'll continue. But all in all, this coaching staff's got to be very pleased by what they've seen. to the field goal on to kick it away is Pinheiro. Well, now how about this return? A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They're in a bit of a bind, a pretty big bind, down 20 nothing as they start here on first and 10. with Walker to begin the drive. He'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Stick it with Walker on second down. The broken tackle couldn't create a ton of space. He'll be taken down just beyond the 35-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Smith. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up Ford. He continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure, and these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on for the fifth time here today. It's taken to the 26. 
It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Meanwhile, Young's throw complete to his receiver, Thielen. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that will bring up second down. Young now. Connecting here with Chark on the out route. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. Looking to throw, Young. Short throw to the tight end, Thomas. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Give him 15 there, and the Panthers have a first down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. Running right, here's Sanders. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Kobe Bryant makes the stop on that one. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. Here now, third and a yard. Young. That swung out wide to Sanders. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. That throw by Young incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got Mingo. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Again, it's Young. And he's got it. Touchdown, Panthers. Ian Thomas from eight yards out. And the Panthers are able to widen their lead here in this first half. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there, unable to do so. That makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Pinheiro's extra point up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. Oh, 
Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Seahawks going to take over now late in this first half. Well, things for them, just to put it bluntly, man, it has been tough sledding here in the first half, facing that big deficit. The clock is dwindling now. Maybe if they can get something on the board here before intermission, they'll have at least a little momentum heading into the second half. On first down, Smith. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. On second down, here's Smith. Left side complete to Lockett. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw is Smith. He's going to get this complete here to lock it. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. It actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Now Gino. That's caught over the middle by Fant. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Third and two. Again, Smith. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll run for it. It's Walker. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Myers kick is good, and that will cut the lead down to three scores at 24. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing at the break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. Jason. 
So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've come to halftime after a very one-sided beginning to this one. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. In that first half, we saw the veteran Miles Sanders doing his thing. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. The Panthers out in front, and they will get the football first. Second half action underway. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. But the Panthers going to take over here to start quarter number three. Second half will start with a run by Sanders. Oh, some strong running. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 75 yards on the ground now for Sanders. He's got a first down. They've got the lead early here in the third quarter, and runs like that are how they established that lead in the first half. I love the fact that you're using the word lead because they are leading from the front, pounding on the defense right now with the running game, and truly establishing themselves here in the second half. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustment, what they talked about, maybe it was just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Young to throw it. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Young on third down. And that is incomplete. And that is exactly what you needed defensively. It's a long road back from here. But that's a good start to the second half as they force a punting situation and a fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Throwing now is Gino. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. An attempt at a deep ball there, and they didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Here's Smith now on second down. 
multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Now a tough spot for Geno Smith and company after the sack. It's third and long. Back to throw now in his own end zone. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there. It's fielded at the 45. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. To throw, Young. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. A give running left, it's Sanders, and he'll be brought down at about the 42. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Third down, Young from the gun. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Play action, it's Smith. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Here's second and 10. From the gun, it's Walker. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Fielded at the 33. A beautiful fake. 
It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and it will be the Panthers' ball, first and 10. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Well, give him credit for trying, but there is no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stop the run and then execute it. And we're at the 41, second and nine. Now Young. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, but now it'll be third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing Young. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. And 21 yards there as they convert on third. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run with Sanders. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 89 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. Sanders shaking and banking and brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. They'll run with Sanders. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Second and goal from the one. Sanders is in. Touchdown, Carolina. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was Miles Sanders who finished it off with a touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. And 
and he won't quite make it to the 25. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, still in the third quarter here. Now you look at the scoreboard, that deficit probably a little too much to overcome. But completions like that may be something to build on for future weeks. Yeah, it's all about ending things on a strong note here, isn't it? Because my mindset is it's a new ball game from here to the end. Make sure it's a good one and close it out. No gain on the play there. Second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and ten now. Here's Smith. Buying time to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Brian Burns flying in there and dropping it for the sack. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. And he'll be brought down with a penalty flag on the field. It was a late decision to throw, and it might have been too late. So the big play nullified a legal forward pass. And maybe we know why they were able to get such a good chunk of yardage on that play. That pass was illegal. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. This offense returns to the field, and the former Penn State star, Miles Sanders, we get a look at him. So a six-carry drive, the last go-around touchdown on the end of it. We'll see if they can duplicate that here. I think that they would like to. I know every runner that we've ever met would love to carry the ball more and more and more. In fact, we keep a ball in the booth just for demonstration purposes. You're holding it right now. I'm going to give it to you. Is it is it heavy? Is it that that heavy no it's pretty light it's pretty light right so keep giving it to him and let him do his work it's not gonna slow him down if it's light for me it's definitely light for him they'll wind up getting just a yard out of it at its second down Now Young. And his throw's going to be incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Looking to throw Young. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Here's Sanders. 
And some good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 122 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. And Young's throw there incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Young's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Loose inside the 30. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 20-yard line. 27 yards there, a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. From the red zone now, Young. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Illegal touching. Offense. So retract the yardage and retract the touchdown. And retract the chunk play. Big strike there to get the touchdown. Now they've got to take it back and see if they've got another one still in their arsenal. Final minute now of the third quarter. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two yard gain. I like the call. Inside the red zone, running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guys at the cornerback position. Now here's Young. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. So Young will head to the sideline, and on is Pinheiro for the Panther field goal. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good, and that will extend their lead even further. I got to think at this point, third quarter, if you're able to hold on to the ball, get three at the end, that's all you're looking for. I would agree with that because right now, this is a job well done by them. In fact, it's almost time for handshakes, a little dap on the sidelines, maybe even start to discuss post-game plans. And for the guys who haven't played yet, go ahead and get loose. Your time is now. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. From the 29, here's second and four. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. 
I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. This offense so far on third down, a pretty anemic, a very anemic one for nine thus far. This is third and four. It's caught, lock it. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Smith throwing again. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Walker. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside, and they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they use your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline. You know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Here's third and three. Here's Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 27-yard line. Excellent play there on third down. Give them 25 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Walker now on first and 10. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Off of play action. Here's Smith. And that's going to be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They snap it to Smith. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Seahawks go for it, but can't convert. And this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score like this. And this is going to be a Panthers first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. Brendan, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. A tackle made by Boye Mafe. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was. Because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. Another run with Sanders. 
It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, they turn to Sanders. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for Carolina. This is taken at the 15. It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They've got some stuff to build on from that last try because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. The result only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Smith now to throw. And that's gonna be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Out of the gun, Smith. And this pass broken up. The contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He still have to get it done, as you noted, and they did. To the air again, Smith. Left side complete to Lockett. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. From the 50, it's Smith. Returning right back to Lockett. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another connection between the two. This one good for 12 and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine and this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. To throw on second down is Smith. Smith and Jigba with the ground. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That's a game of seven. Brings up third and three.
Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll try for the first with Walker. Fighting him off. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They're able to convert with a gain of four. They had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short, definitely was a great time to dial one up. Now Gino on first down. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and seven. Gino now to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Myers' kick is good. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And Raheem Blackshear now to return it. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The possession of the football goes over to Carolina. A last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Second and six. At the 25 yard line. From the 25, here's second and six. They'll go again with Sanders. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Here's third and seven. Young working out of the gun. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And take it right on the 30. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And they will take over first and 10. 
There's Tyler Lockett and the rest of his Seattle teammates coming out for the next possession. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now a second and two. Throwing is Smith. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Third and two, Smith. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, CD, that helps the home team as they try to erase this deficit, give them the penalty for pass interference on the defense. Yeah, and they certainly haven't been happy with what they've seen so far, have they? They're certainly hoping that that call now might get the fans back into this one. Second and a couple. Here's Smith. And this is caught at the eight. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. And with this game well in hand, perhaps we are seeing the coverage lighten up a little bit as they got burned there a bit for a first down. Well, we certainly know the coach isn't happy along the sideline because he certainly wants him to finish this one out the way they started it. He doesn't want to give up any soft completions, no late point. He and he's across for the touchdown. Too little, too late, but he does get in for six. No wonder you're grinning. You just beat me in our fantasy league. Indeed I did, my good man. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but... This one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Myers connects on the PAT, and the lead is down to 24. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Just all around a solid performance, and now they've got the three-score lead here, Charles, in the final seconds of the fourth quarter. Yeah, and this one, they've been in control, haven't they? They've earned this victory. No question who the better team was out there in this game. And frankly, the score could have been a lot worse than it was. Give them a lot of credit for how they played in this one. So this one is over, a victory for Carolina. And say what you want about Lumen Field here in Seattle, but for my money, this is the loudest and most difficult place to win in the league when you're on the road. It's very hard. The fan support, off the charts. The way that they make noise and understand when to make noise, they understand the game as well as anyone. And how about what we get in our, our media packets when we start preparing for the game? They have 